szavazasz. Thank you. Tak. Zamykam na tym debatę. Głosowanie odbędzie się. Következő napi rendi pont. The next item on the agenda is the foreign agents law in Nicaragua. There was a request about the speaking, changing the regulation on the speaking order. The next bureau meeting we will discuss this, but until now, on this session, we are going to stick to the regulation, so it's in order of tabling. So that's why az első hozzászóló Metz képviselő asszony, öné asszó. Ms. Metz, first speaker. And dear Madam Commissioner, the proposed law on foreign agents comes after weeks of increased repression against activists and human rights defenders in Nicaragua. Especially women activists face growing violence and intimidation, including sexual violence and threats on social media. This law, together with a proposed special law on cybercrime, could have a negative impact on the right to equal political and public participation and lead to unlawful criminalization of civil society organizations, activists and human rights defenders. Numerous NGOs have expressed their concern. I hope that the voices, that their voices will be heard and that the Congress of Nicaragua rejects these laws. Repression of the opposition and silencing their voices is not the way forward. Dialogue is. I call on the government of Nicaragua and all parties concerned to engage in a meaningful and comprehensive national dialogue to come to an agreement of electoral reforms that would guarantee credible, inclusive and transparent elections next year. Thank you. Thank you very much. Next speaker is Ms. Holmes Ginell. Thank you, President. Nicaraguan citizens have been grappling with unacceptable circumstances for quite some time. Ortega's government is uh, governing against the will of a majority here in the European Parliament. We call on the Nicaraguan government to move away from repression and authoritarianism. There will be consequences, more sanctions, for example. They are breaching human rights through these proposed bills, such as the law on foreign agents. They must free prisoners of conscience and allow exilees to return to Nicaragua, return to democracy, to dialogue, reform, so that the upcoming elections can be free and fair. Here in Europe, we show solidarity with those resisting on a daily basis, those facing threats, all the women that are facing political repression and gender-based violence, sexual violence. We are separated by many kilometers, but we fight together to defend your rights. We fight for democracy, freedom, and social justice. We stand by your side, the side of those fighting for pluralism in Nicaragua, where it doesn't matter what your origin, gender, or ideas are. A fairer Nicaragua. Thank you. Thank you. The next speaker is Ms. Mr. Pis Valsidias. Thank you, President. Nicaragua is at a turning point. Either it goes towards reform, compromise, free, transparent elections in 2021, or it continues down Ortega's path, which will lead to electoral fraud, undoubtedly. Now, what do we think will happen in Nicaragua? Have we not learned from what happened in Venezuela? Let us send a clear message to the High Representative and to the Council. We need democratic change in Nicaragua, and if there is no democratic change, then there must be consequences. If Ortega continues to attack democracy and human rights, then there must be a firm swift response from the European Union. What are we calling for in this resolution? We want sanctions uh, targeting uh, Ortega and Murillo. We also want to look at the democratic clause and trigger it in the association agreement. We are Democrats in the European Parliament and we would like to see the 
clause triggered if we don't see a return to democracy? How many deaths will we tolerate in Nicaragua before we take action? If Ortega and Murillo want to continue robbing the little left to the Nicaraguan people, then it should not be with us complicit. So we need to honour our mandate. We are doing so, and we want the council to do so also. Thank you. Mr. Lopez. Thank you, President. Today, we are seeing a clear attempt by a dictator to continue depriving people of rights and fundamental freedoms in Nicaragua. The law regulating foreign agents put forward by the Sandinista National Liberation Front together with the hate law and the law on cyber crime is a clear part of the strategy pursued by Ortega to prevent the opposition participating in future elections so that we can't have a rule of law in Nicaragua. These laws will deteriorate the situation in Nicaragua and lead to more censorship of the media, will make it possible for uh, life sentences to be handed down for poli to political dissidents. The laws could be used to sanction people and uh, organizations defending human rights, receiving funding, international funding, including funds from the European Union. These bills and other initiatives clearly demonstrate that the authoritarian government in Nicaragua has no intention to stop breaching human rights. The European Union has a duty to react to this provocative initiatives. We need to use all tools available to trigger the democratic democracy claw in the association agreement between the European Union and countries in the region. Thank you. Thank you very much. Now, Mr. Terch. Thank you, President. Here in Nicaragua, once again, we have an example of a dictatorship. We've, we're all too familiar with this type of dictatorship that is growing and that is tightening the chains around its own citizens. Since 2016, we are seeing ever more repressive force used. We now have laws tabled that are shutting down any form of dialogue that would target those receiving it funds from abroad it would stifle international cooperation. We have the law on cybercrime, which would stifle free speech. We're dealing with a dictatorship, and we should treat it as such. Same uh, goes for Cuba, that exerts great influence in Nicaragua. The high representative needs to send a clear message here. Here in Venezuela, Cuba, and Nicaragua, we need a clear message sent. Thank you. Next speaker. Ms. Benihuema. Thank you. Nicaragua is a country that has suffered for much time. It has a government that denies democracy, freedom of expression, and human rights. It is a communist government, a Sandinista, a Marxist government. We are seeing it as part of a group of totalitarian governments. We want to export our model of democracy, liberal democracy, that respects human rights around the world. So let's not repeat mistakes made in the past. I support this resolution. We need to firmly condemn the regime in place. And I have to mention one point. We hear often 
criticism of the far right in this chamber, but what about the far left and the damage it does? The communist government in Nicaragua has tabled uh, bills that serve to silence opposition, muffle dissent, prevent the opposition from uh, continuing its struggle to defend the rights of Nicaraguans. So the European Union must firmly condemn these uh, bills and uh, stand up for democracy in Nicaragua. Thank you. Thank you. Now, Ms. Litao Makas. Madam President, the COVID-19 crisis has claimed thousands of lives and has worsened inequalities in Latin America. The worst thing that could happen to us now is that COVID could be a pretext for suppressing f fundamental rights and freedoms. And that's all around the world as well as in Nicaragua. What's happening in Nicaragua is uh, precisely that. There are three proposals currently under debate, the foreign agents law, a law on cybercrime and fake news, and stiffer penalties for hate crime. And they are all worsening the authoritarian slide that President Ortega is engaged in. Faced with this situation, the EU can only respond firmly and clearly and not go along with this serious violation of human rights. However, breaking off diplomatic relations would not help the interests of the EU nor the Nicaraguans. That's why we need to support civil society, uh, find a way to engage in dialogue and ensure that the hope remains alive that this country can take the road to democracy. Thank you very much. Now, Ms. Bilbao Barandica from Renew. Thank you, President. The Sandinista forces, well, we're well familiar with them. Now, Daniel Ortega's government shows that it is a dictatorship. In 2019, we wanted dialogue to find a peaceful solution to an unprecedented crisis, organize peaceful elections. Those attempts failed, and now we're seeing laws proposed, such as the law on foreign agents, cybercrime, and the like. These are blatant breaches of basic rights and international agreements signed by Nicaragua. These laws will exacerbate repression in the country and make life more difficult for human rights defenders. So I share my solidarity with uh, the victims of this repression. I believe we should send a European Parliament mission to Nicaragua as soon as possible. We need to stand by human rights defenders, independent media, and uh, all forms of democracy. We need to call for Nicaragua to cease this course, and we should trigger the relevant clauses in the association agreement otherwise. Thank you. Thank you very much. Please stick to the speaking time. Now, Ms. Bild. Thank you, Madam President. Since the repression of social movements in April uh, 2018, the uh, Nicaragua seems to be becoming authoritarian. Um, uh, NGOs uh, receiving foreign funding are being repressed. There is uh, the uh, a number of laws have been passed. We're not talking about the Catholic Church. It has been uh, the, uh, the subject of uh, attacks by President, uh, Nicar President Ortega, and the, uh, the Archbishop is talking about uh, persecution. In the Middle East, uh, Christi Christianity is the most op oppressed religion in the world. The draft law on um, so-called false news uh, can uh, lead to imprisonment of four years. Also, the, uh, this is being used to muzzle uh, the freedom of expression. Nicaragua is a, a caricature of a, a, back, of a fundamental backsliding on human rights. Thank you. 
Mr. Czarnecki for the ECR. Madam President, Madam Commissioner, if you're in Parliament who speaks with a loud voice on many different things, we will stand united on this as well. And that's all very well. It's a very needed voice. We need to, to uh, support our friends in Nicaragua who fight for freedom of speech, for the right to demonstration, for basic fundamental rights, as was mentioned by the previous speaker. I think we should state clearly that this is not a one-off situation in Nicaragua, but it's a systemic problem. And our pressure must be very specific. It's not enough to pass resolutions. We must say very clearly that if the N Nicaraguan regime doesn't change its existing policies, then we will impose sanctions, for example, uh, blacklisting politicians, not letting them into EU. Thank you. Mr. Lopez. Thank you, President. Here in the European Parliament, once again, we firmly condemn the authoritarian behavior of uh, President Ortega in Nicaragua. We do this because we understand that the laws proposed, such as the law on foreign agents, represents backsliding, repression and persecution of political opposition. It does not respect pluralism, freedom of expression and press freedom. We in the European Parliament call for hostilities with civil society to end. We need to be smart in the way we use all the tools at our disposal to exert pressure on the government in Nicaragua. We should use all diplomatic channels and tools available to us. To what end? To ensure electoral reform, reform throughout the country, to ensure fair elections that offer a democratic guarantee to civil society and the opposition so that they can all compete in those elections on an equal footing. Thank you very much for the European Commission. Mrs. Schwitzer. Since the last time we discussed Nicaragua in this parliament, last December, the situation in the country has not improved. Against the renewed pattern of persecution, harassment and intimidation, the European Union is following possible adoption of the law of regulation of foreign agents and the special law on cybercrimes, which could be used to tighten further the grip over civil society in Nicaragua. The draft foreign agents law in particular could be used to impose further restrictions on civil and political rights on the individuals, civil society and on media outlets. It will also probably affect our cooperation programs as well as Nicaragua's human rights obligations and commitments. Since the beginning, we have followed with utmost attention the tabling of the draft foreign agents law. On Tuesday, our head of delegation in Managua, accompanied by all EU member states pre uh, present in the country, reached out to the Nicaraguan authorities in Managua at Minister of Foreign Affairs level to voice our concerns and find out more about the draft text, as well as to share our preoccupation on how the law would affect international human rights law and civil liberties in Nicaragua. The European Union has consistently voiced concerns against law labeling NGOs as foreign agents all over the world. Nicaraguan citizens should be able to exercise their freedom of association effectively and non-governmental organizations should operate in an, environment, in an environment conducive to the promotion and protection of human rights and fundamental freedoms. Civil society should operate free from hindrance and insecurity. Civil society organizations are essential actors for the promotion of human rights, good governance, democracy and the rule of law. The European Union commends and expresses its support for all individuals and organizations in Nicaragua who are still carrying out their legitimate and peaceful human rights work despite the challenging circumstances in which they operate. Thank you. Köszönöm szépen. A vitát ezzel lezárom és a szavazásra holnap fog sor kerülni.